What is up amigos? Today we're looking at the effects of a vortex on the surroundings. So a couple of videos ago, we went through the circulation, at least in the Aero Fundamentals course. We went through the circulation, what it was and how to calculate it. And this is gonna feature again in this video. So if you haven't checked out that video, check that video out. And we're gonna be going through the circulation of a vortex. The vorte vortex's radial and tangential velocities, because these are very important. A single vortex and two vortices. So first of all, let's talk about the circulation. So I mentioned in that other video that the circulation, which we denote by the Greek letter gamma, is referred to as the strength of the vortex. Now this is very important because it means that if we have two different vortices, we can then integrate around them the closed integral of the velocity and figure out what the strength of each vortex is and then compare them. And this is in units of meters squared per second in SI units. So with a vortex, let's say we have a vortex here and it's spinning this direction, so clockwise, four vortices, a clockwise spin will result in a positive circulation. And let's say the circulation for this is 10 meters squared per second. So what are the tangential and velocity and radial uh, velocity components of this vortex? Well, as we go out, we'll notice that the vortex doesn't actually affect the flow in the radial direction, so away from the actual vortex. There's no velocity here, so VR equals zero, so the flow is not trying to move away from the vortex or inwards to the vortex. Now, there is also another thing that we need to talk about, which is the Bernoulli's approach to this, but we'll get to that in a second. So the radial velocity is actually zero from the vortex itself. But what about the tangential velocity? So let's say we have a concentric circle around the vortex and we have the flow moving around in this direction because the flow moves around in the clockwise sense, the tangential velocity, which we denote as V theta, does not equal zero. So that means that the flow is actually moving around in this concentric circle, and we have a bunch of these circles going all the way around. Obviously, there are infinite amount going all the way out, and that means that at this point, if we were to draw a line horizontally, we always have the flow moving down like this for this particular vortex because it's moving in this um, clockwise direction. So what does that mean? Let's say we have a particle right here and it's right on the horizontal line. So it's not at an angle to the vort to the, so the um, rotation up here, it's right in the horizontal side. So if we were to extend these streamlines out, we would then notice that this streamline hits this point and obviously the uh, velocity is going to be tangential to it. And that means that the particle is going to be moving down at this uh, direction with this velocity. Why? Because the vortex is moving around and it's inducing all this flow around it. So if we had to have a particle down here, it'd be moving this way to the left because the flow is moving around like this. If we had it diagonally down here, the particle would be moving down to the left because the flow is moving down at that point like that fashion and so on around the circle. So that's the direction that the particle will be moving in that is caught in this vortex uh, situation here. What velocity will it be moving at? So I mentioned that this vortex is, has a circulation of 10 meters per second, and this is where the vortex's um, circulation becomes quite handy to know. I noted in the other video that when we talked about circulation, that circulation is such a important parameter, one that's very overlooked, and I went through two different ways that circulation um, really tells you a lot of information about the setup that you have. This is yet another one. So let's say these particles, the center of this vortex and this particle is separated by one meter. How does that make a difference? How does that indicate how much, how fast this particle is moving? Well, it comes down to this equation. So V theta equals minus gamma divided by two pi r. Let's discuss each of these terms. Gamma, we know is the circulation. V theta, we know is the tangential velocity along this point. So any point in the flow, what the tangential velocity is of that particle in the radial components. VR, which is the radial velocity is obviously zero, as we mentioned. R is the distance from the vortex to this point. I've noted this as one meter. So by knowing these two properties, the circulation and the radial velocity, the radial distance, sorry, we can figure out what the tangential velocity is. And in this particular case, it's minus 10 divided by two times 3.14 pi times one. And this comes out to be 
1.59 minus 1.59 meters per second. So this now means that we know that this point here is moving down with a velocity of 1.59 meters per second. That's how a single vortex can affect any point in the flow and we can calculate how much it's affecting it and to what extent with a very simple equation. That's one vortex. What if we have two vortices? Let's say we have one vortex here, we're gonna call this vortex A. We have another vortex here called vortex B. Vortex A is the same as this one back here. So this was circulating in, rotating in a clockwise sense. The circulation is 10 meters squared per second. I'm gonna say that this B vortex is going to rotate in the opposite sense with the exact same opposite circulation minus 10 meters per second, meters squared per second. And the reason why it's a minus is because it's rotating in the counterclockwise sense. And in our, um, our convention of um, assigning these values, negative means it's counterclockwise, positive means it's clockwise. And I'm going to say that these vortices are separated by one meter. Now you can say whatever you want, I'm just saying one meter to make it easier to calculate. So what happens to these vortices? How do they move? How do they affect each other? Do they affect each other? We already went through this situation where Vortex A affected everything in its flow, including a point, which is exactly where Vortex B is now, by moving it down at 1.59 meters per second. That will also be the case in this situation, because if we were to draw these streamlines again, we will find that this vortex's point lies on one of these streamlines and is moving down with the exact same velocity. And that is being induced by Vortex A. So we know that in one second, this vortex will move down by 1.59 meters because that's the velocity of it. What about vortex A though? Is that being affected by vortex B? The answer is yes. So we can do the exact same thing where we have these concentric circles going around. These are streamlines, by the way, and streamlines are the velocity field. The velocity field means that if you go anywhere in the field, you can figure out what the velocity of that point is based on the streamlines. If you don't know what streamlines, streak lines, and path lines are, check out video nine of our Aero Fundamentals course, where we go through this in detail and explain it quite well, even if I do say so myself. And anyway, coming back to this point here, Vortex B will also affect Vortex A by the same amount and the opposite way, because we know that the circulation is the same. So if we were to do this calculation of V theta, we put in minus 10 meters per second up here, meters squared per second, sorry, divided by two times by pi times by R, R is one meter. So this comes out to be 1.59 meters per second. In, and this is a radial component, uh, sorry, in the, in the um, radial coordinate system. So this is the tangential component and it means it's going down. And this is going down at 1.59 meters per second in the Cartesian coordinates. So that means that vortex A is pushing vortex B down at a velocity of 1.59 meters per second. Vortex B is pushing down vortex A at 1.59 meters per second. What does this mean over time? So in one second, both of these vortices will move down by 1.59 meters, which means that they stay exactly the same distance from each other and the relative position in time. So at one second down in time, they're down here perhaps, which is now 1.59 meters. Oh, this is not to scale by the way, but I don't have any more paper here to, to draw on. Let's just say this is 1.59 meters down. Vortex A and vortex B are the exact same distance apart from each other and in line horizontally. So again, at this point, they are then gonna be continually moving each other down at this velocity. So they're moving down together with each other and at the same velocity. Now that's in theory. There is another caveat that we need to discuss here. So this is assuming that in time, the vortices stay the same strength. They do not reduce in strength. They do not get annihilated or they do not experience constructive interference. That is wrong in this case because for two reasons. First of all, we have two vortices and they are moving in the opposite direction. They are, one's rotating in the clockwise sense, one rotating in the counterclockwise sense. Now we have two vortices of opposite signs. They annihilate each other over time. One tries to force the other one to rotate in one direction. The other one tries to force the other one to rotate in its own direction and they cancel out over time. So they are annihilating each other with time, which results in the circulation dropping with time. They're getting weaker until the point where they are no longer, um, they no, no longer exist. That's one reason why in time the circulation will reduce. That means that in one second in time, okay, they've moved down by 1.59 meters, but now the circulation of vortex B might be five minus five meters squared per second, and this might be five meters squared per second. 
So that means that they are now moving each other down by less, by about half. So it's going to be a little bit under 0 0.795 meters per second, 0 0.795 meters per second. If you run it through this equation again, uh, I'm not going to because I know it's just half. So it's an easy calculation to do in your head. So I know now that they are only going to be moving down by 0 0.8 meters in the next second. And the next second is going to halve again, let's say, and then continually go like that. That's one reason why the vortices reduce in strength over time. The other reason is because of viscosity. So viscosity is there to arrest flows. It's there to resist the movement. So anytime you have movement, this viscosity is trying to stop that from happening. And so viscosity is going to be using the energy of the vortices and converting it into heat. And that reduces the energy of the vortices and effectively annihilates them over time as well. That's the second reason why vortices get weak, weaker over time. These two vortices are affecting each other to the point where they are trying to annihilate each other. And they are also experiencing viscosity, which is also making them weaker. Now, that's how vortices affect each other. If you remember at the start of this video, I talked about Bernoulli's equation and how, um, which I've done a video on as well, and how a vortex doesn't have any radial velocity. It doesn't induce the flow radially away from or towards its center. Now, that's strictly true in terms of the circulation, but a vortex is a low pressure core. And because it is a low pressure core, it means that flow wants to move inwards because you have a higher pressure out here, high P. At the center, we have low P. So uh, flow wants to move from high pressure to low pressure, and that's the way it flows. And that is a function of Bernoulli's equation as well. Um, so this vortex, even though technically itself, it is not trying to induce flow inwards or outwards, because it is a low pressure core, it is actually sucking fluid into it. So I just want to clear that up just to make sure that that assumption that I made, you understand why I made that and in this particular context and how it's not really applicable in real life. But if you just want to look at theory, you can kind of ignore it to some extent just to understand how vortices move generally speaking. So that's how a vortex affects its surroundings. Let's quickly sum up what we just went through here. First of all, this comes back to circulation, gamma. I did a, a, a video on this a couple of videos ago, and we concluded that it was the strength of a, a vortex. That's one use for it. Here we also found that we can also use it to determine how a vortex is affecting the flow around it. We know that from theory, let's say there is no change in pressure from this core compared to the surroundings, then there will be no radial velocity around this vortex, which means that there is only tangential velocity. So any particle that's caught in its flow will want to move around it, so continually move around in a concentric circle. And we can calculate what the velocity is at any point, it could be here, here, whatever, by using this equation here, v theta, which is the tangential velocity, equals minus the circulation divided by 2 times pi times the distance of that point away from the center of the vortex. So that makes it very easy to determine what the uh, velocity field is here, what the streamlines look like as well. What if we have two vortices? Well, we found that one vortex will affect the other, and that vortex will affect the other one too. They have this mutual influence. And depending on their sign of rotation and their circulations and where they are, they will affect each other differently. But we can again use this equation to calculate how they are moving in, with respect to each other. And that makes it very powerful. We understand where the vortex will be in the next moment in time and where it wants to go. And also we understand if the vortices are going to be trying to annihilate each other and obviously viscosity will be reducing the circulation over time. So we understand that potentially when time uh, marches forward, this circulation of each vortex will reduce and this uh, in inducement of each vortex around each other or in different directions will weaken with time. So that's in this video. If you liked it, make sure to like it. And if you want to see more like this, subscribe and also check out video number nine for streamlines, path lines and streak lines. And if you want to learn more about this kind of stuff, like vortices and how they work, check out a book by John D. Anderson called Fundamentals of Aerodynamics. I've linked it in the description below. We also have courses on this kind of stuff on our website. So you can check that link in the description below. And I'll see you next video. Peace out, amigos.